Ken Limited manufactures a component for the computer industry. The following flexible budgets have already been prepared for 60%, 75% and 90% of the plant's capacity. So the output levels here, we've got 60%, 75% and 90%. The units 24,000, 30,000 and 36,000. So the direct materials, 108,000 at 60%, 135 at 75% and 162 at 90% and it goes on like that. Profit is budgeted to be 20% of sales. So part A, what is required? So number one, separate production overheads into fixed and variable elements. Number two, separate other overhead costs into fixed and variable elements. And number three, prepare a flexible budget for 95% activity level using marginal costing principles and show the contribution. Part B, assume that Conlon Limited is currently operating at 100% capacity and is considering two capital expenditure options costing 8,000 each as follows. Option one, modernization of machinery, which will give 60 cent per unit in the production overheads. Option two, buying new machinery, which would increase the plant's capacity by 10% while reducing all fixed overheads, including administration by 8%. What is required? So part one, prepare flexible budgets, using marginal costing principles and showing contributions for both options, taking the new cost structures into account. Number two, advise the company on the best option. And part C, what's required, this is a bit of theory here, part one, distinguish between the terms contribution and profit. And number two, outline why Conlon Limited would prepare a flexible budget. Okay, so all of this has to be done in 36 minutes and it's 20% of your overall exam if you choose to do question nine, the budget in question. Okay, so getting started. So we've read through all of these, all right. Now, if we look at all of these costs here, they're, they're, they are all different types of costs, right? Number one and number two is asking us to separate production overheads into fixed and variable elements and separate other overhead costs into fixed and variable elements, number two. So that means production overheads and other overhead costs must have elements of fixed costs. So they're fixed. They are fixed. They are the exact same regardless of the output. So if you imagine like production overhead fix would be 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. So the difference between all of these different level of outputs would therefore be variable. And the same with other overheads. So the fix would be the same. Just for example, just say it's 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. And the difference then is the variable. So we need to find out what is the fixed element then and what is the variable element. Okay, and to do that, we're going to use a method called the high-low method. So, number one, separate production overheads into fixed and variable elements. And this is going to be using the high-low method. All right, it's very easy method to use. All right, you just need to remember how to do it, but it's very, very, very easy. So, to find the variable cost per unit, we're going to find the variable cost first, and then we'll be able to find the fixed element of it. So at 24,000 units, the production overhead costs 132,400. At 30,000 units, it's 158,500. And at 36,000 units, it's 184,600. So the difference between the high output of 36,000 and 24 must be variable because the fixed costs stay the same regardless, regardless of the, the level of activity. So to find the variable costs using the high-low method, from the high number of units, 36,000, we're going to take away the low number of units, so 36 minus 24. So the difference there between those two is 12,000 units. And then we want to find the difference between the high, 184,600, and the low cost, 132,400. So that is 55,200. So this is going to tell me my variable cost. So therefore, variable cost per unit, 55,200 euro divided by 12,000 units is equal to 4 euro 35 variable cost per unit. To find the fixed cost per unit then, right, we are going to sub in 
the variable cost per unit that we found out, okay, in the last step. So we're going to write down all of the different costs at the different level of activity. We are going to multiply the number of units at each stage by the variable cost, and that will give us the total variable cost at each stage of activity. If we take the variable cost away from the total cost, that's going to give us 28,000 euro then across the board. So you can see that that is the fixed cost then. It does not change as the output changes. Okay, so therefore fixed costs are 28,000 euro. Number two then asks us to separate production overheads into fixed and variable elements sorry so that should that should read other overheads into fixed and variable elements so we're looking at the other overhead costs now so we're going to do the exact same thing again right so we have exact same thing high minus low is equal to the difference so the output it's going to be the same as the last one so you have got your 12,000 units is the difference there but the difference between the costs, so high is 250,800, minus low 169,200 is 81,600. So 81,600 divided by 12,000 units is 6 euro and 80 cent variable cost per unit. To find the fixed element of that then, so 24,000, 30,000, 36, we're going to multiply each of those by the variable cost that we have just worked out in the last step which was six euro and 80 cents. So we write down the total and from the total, we're gonna take away the variable. So 24,000 by six euro and 80 is 163,200. 30,000 units by six euro 80 is 204,000 euro. And 36,000 units by six euro 80 is 244,800. And so then the difference across the board then 6,000 fixed costs. So the fixed costs are remaining the same, okay? Even though the output changes, they are remaining the same. So the fixed costs are 6,000 euro. So that is part two done. Part three then is asking us to prepare a flexible budget for 95% activity level using marginal costing principles and show the contribution. Okay, so this is going to be very familiar to you if you know the question eight on costing. Okay, so marginal costing is going to be very similar to this. All right, so how do we do in marginal costing principles? It's very easy. What we do is we take away the, from the sales, we take away the variable cost and that is equal to the contribution and then we take away the fixed cost and that is equal to the profit. So we just separate out the variable and the fixed cost, okay? So output at 95% activity level is 38,000 units. So direct materials, variable cost, 4 euro, 4 euro 50 per unit. Direct labor, 520 per unit. Production overheads, variable cost, 435 per unit. And then the fixed is there for 28,000. Other overheads, variable costs, six euro eighty per unit, whereas fixed costs are six thousand euro, and the admin expense is one hundred percent fixed costs, so forty thousand five hundred across the board. It doesn't change. So let's start with the um, flexible budget using the marginal costing principle. So as I said, we have sales less variable costs is equal to contribution, and you must write the word contribution. What does contribution mean? It is just what is our contribution towards paying the fixed costs, okay? So we know all of the costs. We don't know what the sales figure is yet or what the profit is yet. However, we are told in the question here, profit is budgeted to be 20% of sales. So profit is budgeted to be 20% of sales. So direct materials... We have 38,000 euro by 450, that's 171,000. Our direct labour is 38,000 units by 5 euro 20 per unit, which is 197,600. Our production overheads, 38,000 units by 4 euro 35 is 165,300. 38,000 units by 6 euro 80, okay, it's going to be your 
other overheads. You can put in your fixed overheads for production now or whenever you want, but production overheads, 28,000 euros euro so that's that put in now other overheads the variable element 680 by 38,000 is 258,400 then the fixed element of that is 6,000 and then the admin it's 100% fixed so 40,500 goes straight in there now at this point in time we have all of our costs in so the flexible budget and marginal costing format we just split up separate the variable costs and the fixed costs and we do it in this format that you see here. Now we need to work out the sales and the profit and the contribution. So again how do we do that? Well profit is budgeted to be 20% of sales. So therefore okay therefore if sales is 100% and profit is 20% then the costs must be 80 percent so the 792 300 and the 74,500 is 80 percent if you divide that by 80 and multiply it by 100 you're going to get your sales so your sales therefore 1 million 83,500 euro to find your contribution then 108,3500 minus your 792 300 is equal to 291,200 euro. Minus your fixed cost of 74,500 is equal to your profit there, 216,700 euro. So that is your flexible budget for 95% activity using the marginal costing principles. So that's that complete. Okay, part B then says, assume that Condon Limited is currently operating at 100% activity and is considering two capital expenditure options costing €8,000 each as follows. Option one, modernisation of machinery, which will save £0.60 cent per unit in the production overheads. So let's do that one first. So modernisation of machinery, which will save £0.60 cent per unit in the production overheads. So the production overheads before were four euro and 35 cent okay so we got that when we did the high low method so it was four euro 35 so now if we take away 60 cent the new um variable cost at three euro and 75 cent okay so we've got the direct materials 40,000 units all right by 450 so everything's the same there apart from your production overheads 375 okay so that's gone down from 4 euro and 35 okay so you should have that other one done in the page in front of you so you should see that 60 cent less than 435 in the last part is 375 okay so other overhead costs then no change there and then everything else is the same apart from your 375 which has gone down from 435 okay so you also have to work out the sales, the contribution and the profit. So remember that um, profit is 20% of sales. So we just do that in the exact same way, okay, as before. But your um, capacity, 100% capacity is 40,000 euro, 40,000 units, okay? So 40,000 units there. Now, option two, okay, buying new machinery which would increase the plant's capacity by 10% while reducing all fixed overheads, including administration, by 8%. So currently operating at 100% capacity, so that is 40,000 units. So if you were increasing the plant's capacity by 10%, that's 110,000, okay? So that's 44,000 units that you're going to be making while reducing all fixed overheads, including administration, by 8%. So our fixed overheads that we had before, we are going to be multiplying all of them by 92%. All right. So we're going to have variable overheads. So 44,000 by 450. Direct labour, 44,000 by 520. Production overheads, 44,000 by our original one, 435 production overheads we're going to multiply the previous previously we had 28,000 euro we're going to multiply that by 92 percent and we're going to get 25,760 
with our other overhead costs it's 44,000 by 680 so that was the original figure no change there apart from the amount of output the other overhead costs in the fixed it was previously 6,000 6,000 multiplied by 92 percent is 5,520 euro then your administration is 40,500 multiplied by 92 percent which is 37,260 euro so we taught all of them up the costs are 80 percent okay of the sales so 917400 plus 68,540 into your calculator divided by 80 and multiplied by 100 gives you your sales so 1232425 1232425 1, minus your total variable cost of 917400 is equal to your contribution of 315025 Then you minus your fixed costs, 68,540, and that gives you a profit of 246,485 euro. Now, part two, advise the company on the best option. So option two should be chosen as the profit is 246,485 euro, while the profit with option one is less at 221,125 euro, which is a difference of 25,360 euro. Part C. So part one, distinguish between the terms contribution and profit. So contribution is sales revenue less variable costs. This goes towards paying off the fixed costs. Once the fixed costs are paid off, any further contribution goes towards profit. So profit is sales revenue less total costs, so fixed and variable. Part two, outline why Conlon Limited would prepare a flexible budget. So number one, to show management the cost levels at different levels of production. Number two, to compare actual costs and budgeted costs at the same level of activity. Number three, to compare budgeted costs and actual costs in order to identify variances. This allows corrective action to be taken. And number four, to help in controlling costs or planning production levels. It is misleading to compare the budgeted costs at one level of activity with the actual costs at a different level of 